Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I rise this evening to begin a bipartisan conversation about the future investments of our resources in both human and capital resources in the region of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Everyone will agree that we must do whatever it takes to protect America and keep hostilities from our shores. And over time, I believe we'll also come to understand that religious fundamentalism is civilization's real enemy, no matter if it is disguised in Muslim, Judeo-Christian, Hindu, Sikh, or any other religious clothing. Terrorism, terrorism is not really the enemy, for violent extremists simply use terrorism as a tactic. Overcoming the violent extremists will require skilled and talented police work as coordinated between civilized nations, not only our mutual military might. And we must hunt, capture, and prosecute the violent extremists wherever they seek to establish themselves, sharing the expense and doing so with our colleagues and our mutual nations overseas, our friends, particularly in NATO. Most importantly, throughout this process, we must continue to defend ourselves within the laws as established by our United States Constitution. We're still paying for the poor judgments of the previous administration, which in 2003 placed our children in the middle of a centuries-old religious civil war in Iraq, when, in fact, our invasion of Iraq was not necessary. By continuing to spend millions of our hard-earned tax dollars over there, we are unable to solve our own problems here at home. The truth about Iraq is this. No weapons, no weapons of mass destruction were present in Iraq, and al-Qaeda extremists were not based there before President Bush convinced Congress to go to war. And remember this. Iraq was not involved in the attacks against America and did not pose a risk to our national security, and it was not a danger to our national security at all. We all have the same goal, to support our troops before, during, and after they've served in harm's way as we begin to build a better and safer and more secure nation for all of us. Recent testimony before Congress, before the Armed Services Committee in the last several weeks, by our military leaders has made it clear, first, that they all don't agree on what we should be doing in the region, and secondly, that there is no purely military solution in either Iraq or Afghanistan, only a political one. We must therefore move our troops away from Iraq, focusing again upon al-Qaeda. Tonight, here on the House floor, we will be discussing our ongoing involvement in Afghanistan and Pakistan, which for centuries has been the graveyard of invading empires, a place where nations, a place where our nation's most precious resources, our soldiers, are presently engaged in efforts to, as President Obama has stated, quote, disrupt, dismantle, and defeat al-Qaeda and its safe havens in Pakistan and to prevent their return to Pakistan and Afghanistan, close quotes. I'm very grateful that President Obama has taken time to listen, taken time as well, and trust that he will design a strategy that has as its first goal the safe return of all of our troops as soon as possible, for there is really no purely military solution to the complex global problems that we are. And as history has proven time and time again, making war is our worst human failure. 